Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about composites for a change, so just bear with me. Uh, so this is some work I, I'm doing on carbon compression, trying to improve the performance in compression. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the inherent material properties, and then I'm going to show you a study relating to these properties. So when you think about carbon, we normally think about it as a linear material. However, we have well-documented nonlinearity in carbon. So uh, just one point to mention, everything we talk about here is compression. So all the strains I'm going to mention, that's all compressive. So uh, this is just a collation of some results uh, with compressive strain versus compressive stress. And we can see this softening of the material as the strain increases. So this is just a blown up uh, version of this figure. So uh, the modulus drops. And if we, if we follow the strain curve up to a really large strain, this is what we're going to see. So this is a single fiber test. So a uh, very clever one, by the way. So this is a single fiber, single ca carbon fiber, I am seven, I think, in a compression. So we see this large strain of 15%. And also compared to traditional composites, which are about 1.2 to 1 1.4. Uh, and we see this metallic-like plateau. Uh, and obviously, we don't know where the damage originates here and such, but uh, it's an interesting figure, I think. So why does this the failure occur if, if carbon can go up to 15 and our composites go to 1.5 or less? Why do we get failure? So it's not fiber limit. It's a structural phenomenon. It's shear instability. So this is similar to buckling, uh, where a com composite is subject to the stress. So this is a fraction of a composite. We have fibers that are initially misaligned with a this can be very small, because uh, obviously nothing's exact in nature. Uh, so for this misaligned composite, when we try and compress it, uh, we get this comp complementary shear. Now that's going to cause a shear deformation, which in turn is going to cause more shear. And so on and so forth. The material will eventually reach equilibrium. However, at a high enough stress, this equilibrium will be lost. And that's when we get what we call microbuckling or king band failure. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little study that I've done uh, trying to investigate this further. Uh, so I used standard materials. So I am 78552. I've got two carbons. I've got a high volume fraction carbon and a low volume fraction carbon. It's the same fiber, same resin, just a different fiber volume fraction. I've got the S glass here. So I did a parametric study on the effects of the previous phenomenon, the shear instability. So I did a shear test and a compression via bending. More about that later. So these are my shear results. So you see the standard high volume fraction material. It goes up, then plateaus a little bit, and then the fibers start rotating. Uh, anyone who's ever done a shear test will, will know what I mean. Uh, the low VF material, the rotation originates earlier, and it's got a higher shear strain. So the two black lines you see here, the dotted line and the solid lines, uh, these are just my, I fitted these, this data with an exponential fit. I then use these exponential fits to predict the failure due to this phenomenon. So when I draw the curves, this is what I get. So what you have here is the fiber misalignment. So that's going to be a function of the mm, quality of the composite. And this is my instability strain. So this is the strain at which the composite will fail in compression. So my high volume fraction material, you can see it's quite a bit better at low misalignments. Uh, so, uh, there's a crossover point that relates to the low volume fraction material actually being stronger at high strains. But uh, let's skip to the next point. So this is my indirect um, compression test, where I take a specimen which has glass substrate and a single layer of carbon on top. 
and I put in four point bending that compresses the carbon. I can see the results here. So my low volume fraction, obviously it's got more resin, it's less stiff, so the stiffness of the specimen is less. If we look closely at the high strain region, we see that the average strains to failure differ. So my high volume fraction material actually has a higher average stress to failure. Now, if we relate that to the stability data, we see that if we put the 1.72 strain onto the curve, we end up with what would seem a misalignment of 0.45 degrees average misalignment of the fiber. Now, if we assume that the low volume fraction material has a similar misalignment, we come back up this curve, we get our predicted strain to failure of 1.56, which is, well, it's about 3% different from what we get here. So um, this is how we'd explain these different strains, because the, if we assume it was a function of carbon fiber, then uh, we can't explain these. So obviously, if these curves were much more dissimilar, so a really high strain uh, possible with a really good resin, that's, a, that's where we want to be uh, in the future. We want, to, we want to have a curve that is maybe somewhere up here uh, to give us a really nice high strain. And just to follow up on this, uh, please ignore the first part. This is a loading artifact. So this is my strain in the carbon versus my centroid position of the specimen. So if you look at the specimen, the centroid is going to be slightly higher than the middle simply because the carbon is stiffer. Uh, and the centroid, you can see, it goes down. And it is quite a consistent slope for the, both the high and the low volume fraction specimens. So this tells us that the carbon is indeed softening and that we can calculate and quantify that softening. So to conclude this study, shear instability seems to explain well the difference in strains that I've shown before. And also the carbon modulus, uh, this is a strong enough indication to say that it indeed does decrease in compression. Now I wanted to tease my 2.5 compressive strain results at this point, but there's no time, so I'll just finish here. I'd like to thank Hexcel for providing the material for this study. And this work is part of High Product Program, which is joint between Imperial and Bristol. Obviously, my work is funded by the EPSRC. Thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions. <laughs>